My name is Stephanie Hartung, and I serve on the board of the New England Innocence Project. It's such an honor to be a part of the legal team representing Eddie Wright. And we're speaking about this case today in part because we want the public in this community to know that this is an innocent person who's still in prison. There are so many aspects of Eddie's case that support his innocence. Um, one of the ones that stands out that's just particularly shocking is that there's another man who has confessed to the murder. And the person who confessed also had a motive for killing the victim and threatened her on the night of the incident. Yet Eddie still remains incarcerated. I first met Eddie in the summer of 2015. Eddie, for those of us who know him, he really is a special person. He is brilliant, kind, determined, passionate about life. I would describe Eddie as very smart, very funny, uh, very determined and warm. He just has this light in him that kind of shines through and makes you smile from the first time he talks. You see the conviction in what he's telling us, his knowledge of the facts, his knowledge of the law. He's just a testament to, to how some people are just good people notwithstanding what might happen to them. So Eddie was convicted of a murder that took place in 1984 in Springfield, Massachusetts. It was a, a brutal murder of a young woman. She was a dancer who worked at a nightclub in, in Springfield. And she was found bound with her head covered and she'd been stabbed multiple times. Eddie was drawn into the case initially because uh, he had a friendship and a relationship with the victim, something he never made a secret of in any way. That was, I think, an, an easy target for the prosecution to point to a young black man at the scene of the crime the night before a young white woman's murder. He was convicted by an all-white jury, and, and that was by design. I think race played a massive role in this case, from the investigation to the prosecution to the conviction. Eddie had absolutely no motive to commit this murder. The victim was a friend of his, someone who he cared deeply about. The Commonwealth's case was very weak. It relied on forensic evidence that, frankly, would not pass muster at this time. He had an attorney who was not well-versed in criminal law, who did not conduct any investigation, as far as we can tell. We have a third-party culprit who had the opportunity and the motive to kill the victim. So you have him threatening her the night of the murder. This individual confessed twice to murdering the victim. And very importantly, none of this was told to the jury. The jury did not have this information when they convicted Eddie. The jury didn't have the benefit of the DNA evidence that we have today. All the testing that was done, not a single shred of physical evidence supports Eddie's involvement in, in the crime. I think if the jury had all of the information, Eddie would be a free man today. The work of undoing a wrongful conviction in any case is a Herculean task. I don't think Eddie's case would be where it is today. I know it wouldn't without the assistance of, of Skadden. Between the legal team, the investigative team, the forensic scientific team, we've spent many thousands of hours and tens of thousands of dollars on this case. Working on Eddie's case has been one of the greatest privileges of my personal and professional life. Getting to know Eddie as I have through the course of this representation, I've seen just how remarkable some people's spirit can be. Being a black man, there's a lot of personal sentiment that I have here, you know, a lot of frustration, a lot of sadness. However, to get the work done, it kind of, I need to put that to the back burner, but also use that to fuel me. We had a call with Eddie around Christmas time, and we all had the opportunity to show him our Christmas trees. And it was just this really lovely, sweet moment of connection with somebody who we've been working really hard for. Seeing all this overwhelming evidence of this man's innocence, and then just trying to grapple with the question of why is he still in prison? So when I hear marching towards freedom, it really makes me feel more like we're getting there, like we actually are marching towards Eddie's freedom. We don't want him to spend another day, let, let alone another year, in prison for a crime he didn't commit. 
I'm very optimistic about the future of this case. I believe that when a judge and ultimately jury see the whole case, all of the facts, they will see that this is an innocent man. To the Stanton team, this is Edward G. Wright. These words are few, but no matter how many words I use, you can never express my appreciation and gratitude to those individuals from Skagen Arts, Isaac, Nigel, Jonathan, Emily, Esteban, and the others who are unnamed that contributed and worked so hard on my behalf to prove my innocence and correct the wrong. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you.